Hi everyone, welcome for welcome to the to the talk. Thanks for joining us. Uh, as always, it's a it's a really nice uh, tradition. I think for all Zoom events, uh, just uh, tell us where you're joining us from. It's always really nice to see where people are, are from. Um, my name is Alexander. I am one of the instructors at the Type of Cooper uh, program, which is presenting tonight's talk, and I'm uh, presently in New York City at Cooper Union. Uh, and thank you for for joining us for the this talk, uh, it is not uh, only about type uh, by Maria Dariuli. Um, for those who may not know, uh, Type of Cooper is a postgraduate certificate program in typeface design, uh, and it has a dedicated annual lecture series. So the Herb Allen lecture series, which is this uh, talk is part of. Um, it runs concurrently with the uh, curriculum of the Type of Cooper program. Right now, the extended program and the condensed program are in session. So hello to our students who are in the program right now. Thanks for joining us. Um, Typey Cooper offers lots of type design, type uh, typography, and lettering uh, workshops and programs. So if you wanted to check out um, more, uh, I will do my multitasking and uh, try to post things as we go. Um, you can find out a lot more information about the program there. Uh, we have one more talk coming up uh, in a couple of weeks on August 2nd. Uh, the details of that talk are going to be posted soon. Uh, it's, a, it's a lecture by Yuri Gordon, who will be joining us from Moscow uh, in uh, a couple of weeks. So we're super excited about that. Um, today's talk is being recorded, as you can see somewhere along the window somewhere. Uh, it's live streaming to YouTube, which you can, like if you uh, click on that link, that, lay, uh, that recording will stay up. Uh, if you missed anything, you can scrub back. Uh, but we're also recording and we will uh, add this lecture to our growing archive of talks, which go back now five to six years, if not more. Um, we wanted to thank uh, Type Culture for making it possible for us to record today's talk and to continue to add to the, uh, the archive of, of stuff we have. So thanks again to Type Culture, which is a digital type foundry and academic resource for all things related to typeface design. So you saw the lovely animation at the start there. So again, thanks to Type Culture. A um, couple of housekeeping notes. Um, uh, Zoom is Zoom. We do the best we can. Um, if you see any lags, uh, it's it's just something we're gonna have to ride with uh, with the bandwidth, so to speak. Um, please send questions using the Q and A function. Um, we'll check. Um, chat might not be working right now, but we'll, we'll see if we can fix that real quick, um, uh, if possible. Um, but uh, use the Q and A to send questions uh, and. Uh, don't forget, uh, yeah, to to send it uh, during the talk or at the end. We'll take we'll take a few minutes at the end for for Q and A. Um, and it is my absolute pleasure to introduce tonight's speaker. I'm so glad to have her uh, with us. We've been trying to coordinate this talk for a couple of years now, so I'm super super happy we're able to finally make it work uh, and have Maria with us. Um, to 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 uh, to give her talk, so I'll give you a very uh, uh, quick sort of uh, brief introduction, and then let Maria take it, take it away without taking up too much time. Maria uh, Dariuli was born in Moscow. She studied graphic design at the Moscow State University of the Printing Arts. Uh, she also received the MA degree in type uh, from um, in typeface design from Type and Media program at the Royal Academy of Art in The Hague in 2013. Since that time, she has worked as an independent professional designer, initially based in Moscow, and as a co-founder of the independent studio Contrast Foundry. In 2018, uh, she relocated to lovely California, uh, where she is uh, presently broadcasting from and joining us from. Um, her work uh, ranges from um, the traditional to more experimental, uh, from self-initiated projects to more commercial projects. Uh, and most of her projects have been honored by uh, renowned international awards, such as the Art Directors Club, the Type Directors Club, Communication Arts, Morisawa, Red Dot, and many others. Uh, together with Krista Radoeva, she runs uh, Cyrillicsly, uh, appropriately the title Initiative for Seriously Learning the Ins and Outs of Cyrillic Script. Uh, and they have a workshop that uh, I think has maybe a couple of slots that's coming up in September. So. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, 
I'll, I'll post in the chat uh, uh, links to, to Maria's uh, uh, various uh, contacts. Um, but I'm super excited um, to have her with us. And I'm going to turn it over to Maria. Thank you so much for meeting her. Thank you so much for inviting me. And it is an honor to speak. Um, Here and even like nowadays, even if it is online, I think it's even just makes it more easy and uh, more easy for the people to, to give a talk and also more easy to people to attend it as well. Um, and uh, the things that I'll be talking about today is uh, kind of unusual to me uh, just because I'm usually uh, sh showing a lot of like the visuals of what I'm doing and uh, sh uh, telling the uh, stories uh, behind it. But today I will basically be uh, sh showing just life with only like text on them um, and you can even like maybe just like listen to the talk and not look if you want to uh, but um, it's also so a subject to which I think is in a way unpopular and uh, well At least I haven't seen like many talks about it before. And it always uh, seemed to me that, uh, you know, if you become a type designer, you become like a well known type designer, or you have a foundry, it's never. Uh, being understandable how do you actually get there. And that's what I want to talk about. And um, uh, maybe uh, share some of my thoughts about it. And uh, uh, to start with, I would like to just like, um, put ask you, but just to, uh, I would like us all to think about like how many people actually study type design and how many of these people end up doing it full time. And I can see that even uh, very often, even if a person got a master in type design, it doesn't mean that they will keep doing it afterwards. And especially it doesn't mean that they will necessarily have to start a foundry. Um, and of course, uh, we can start also wondering what are all these people doing and um, um, what can you also potentially do if you know that you have an interest in type design and do you have to become a type designer if you studied type design. Um, and of course, I won't be able to um, answer to all of these things, but I will uh, just uh, sh share like my thoughts about it. And we'll talk about um, 
finding out who, what exactly do you want to do. And uh, we'll talk about oh, oh, uh, what can you pay attention to if you want uh, to keep working independently and how um, I will also sh share a few of my thoughts on how the industry might be changing these days. And I will also talk about uh, stuff like uh, also like running a foundry and um, um, which yielded may involve and how are we doing that. And um, in the beginning, I would like to just like, uh, um, ask myself, I'm kind of like, uh, like, like multi, Tasker. And if you have a look at my desktop, it's always like I have a lot of things going on. All the applications are open at the same time. I have like text edit windows with like notes everywhere on my screen. And in a way, I uh, like I know that many people. Uh, Say that they have a dedicated time for the emails or for like doing design stuff. I was never really able to do that myself. And I um and in a way I'm doing everything at the same time. Um, uh, but recently I also had a look at my um as logical chart and like weirdly enough it also like mentioned that um, I like challenges and I keep uh, just um, um, getting into like more and more ambitious goals before even Sitting with uh, the other ones, and I found out that it's actually like that. I guess because, and um, uh, time shows that it's like that. And um, I also think that maybe um, that's actually what helped me, uh, just because I felt well, like. Uh, also looking back, I kind of, I was never imagining the whole like path of getting somewhere or like all the challenges that will go along. I kind of have a picture of the result and I'm just going there in a way. Um, and that's uh, this, Story of my life, I guess. Um, and um, I think that helped me actually. And that's why I am at the place where I am now. Um, and this kind of like, uh, of like multitasking and accepting the challenges and not being afraid of them, that's what help me. Um, um, I initially studied graphic design in Moscow. Um, I also studied type design at the same time. Um, then for a few years, I've been also working as a graphic design. Uh, 
designer and I kept doing type in the night. And uh, it was really hard to make the decision to stop doing that and just like quit my full-time job and uh, just start doing type. Uh, so in a way to break out of from uh, this uh, circle, I just started to apply for type and media in the Hay and I went to study in there and get a master. It was one year, then I came back to Moscow. And at that time, I remember that I got an offer of from a large type foundry um, in Moscow, which I kind of projected at that time. And then I also remembered uh, something that one of my teachers in The Hague, uh, Christoph North, I, uh, told me at, at the end of my studies, uh, well, it's not exactly what he said, but he meant that I should be careful and take time to decide on like where exactly to publish uh, my final project. And I think that also kind of stayed in my head at that time. And I was also just like uh, having a, um, this idea that I have to have a foundry also led to me like uh, projecting uh, the offer, uh, uh, the offers that I got at that time to publish Chimera. And uh, now it may seem like I was very confident in what I was doing and like maybe even was arrogant to do something like that. Uh, but I think it, uh, like it definitely it was not an easy choice uh, at that time. And there were a lot of sacrifices along the way. And in a few years, well, a few years or well, like, I guess, five or four years, we finally uh, um, launched an online store. And at the same time, I also moved uh, to the US. Uh, so now I basically have a company in Moscow, a company in the US. And this is also an interesting experience of um, having both. But I would like to talk about how exactly did I get here, since it's not, um, uh, well, we'll talk about it. I think that in the beginning, when you get into type, you use sign and in many other fields, I think you uh, first focus on just getting better in what you do. You study more, you attend different courses, you 
to work on the skills that you have on the practical skills. Um, then at some point you finish studies and like maybe you have a tight pace that is finished and then you have a goal to release type place and it seems like it will be just a big moment you have it out there you have the royalties and you have a life <laughs> um, then you might also start having an idea that what if I start a foundry and you kind of also imagine that I will just take time to finish the pawns and I will have a good life. Um, I was thinking a lot about that after my studies. And I was also thinking about what exactly do I want to do? And I was also looking at other people in the field and uh, thought each of them had been doing. And um, um, I was looking at a lot of very talented colleagues and I was seeing that they are definitely having issues with uh, um, making things work in a way uh, that like making a living out of doing type designs. So I also started like looking at this studios and uh, type designers who seem to be doing well. And I uh, found out that it seems like uh, Many of them uh, were not only doing type. Uh, um, I could see that very often they were teaming up with uh, graphic design designers and typographers and organizing a studio together. And very often you can also uh, check out the biography of the people and they even didn't have an education in type designs. So I was also wondering how this moon may affect what they do and many of them are publishing they might be publishing a magazine as Peter Bilok and Hippotech does or did in the past and they've been organizing events um, all of them had been uh, speaking and design events um, some of them are even also running a studio or an agency at the same time also many of them are uh, specializing and do a lot of uh, work in terms of like building tools for the colleagues or for designers to have a better access to what they do. Um, and of course, um, there also might be like um, 
an amount of of also luck in terms of who is more popular or who is like less popular and like and like well known and it might uh, have a lot to do with the privilege of people having access to education and having connections um like, like i don't know like different kinds of connections um but um i found out that it's uh of um besides uh, those uh, side uh, things that might be a passion, they could were also really effective in terms of just reaching out to a to a, uh, to a wider audience and being and keep also uh, um, and keeping uh, being interesting to people outside side design um, and I myself. I, I wanted to talk about the very beginning, and initially, I imagined that that is an only way for me to keep doing type. Um, then I wasn't. Uh, like I couldn't see myself being employed by another company. Uh, and by the time we were like um, we uh, were like uh, ready to commission a website. I was asking about um, I uh, kept asking myself like um, how can I um, can I make it so that it that it works and how can I make living out of it? Of course, my initial idea was uh, to keep drawing type and to live on that. Um, I also early enough uh, realized uh, that I want to uh, like be able to do it just by myself. First, since I'm not only designing like Latin, but to relic to, and it's two times more time if you want to do that at the same time in a good way. Uh, so it had to be not just me, but other people as well that will. Share our ideas so who it and keep working um, together, but it doesn't say anything about how exactly do I get there. And I realized that uh, we definitely need to make our like, things that we do visible and what visible 
to who? Uh, um, not only to the colleagues, but to, uh, to other people who are actually like um, getting like, uh, like uh, license to send can commission us something. And at that time, we were often getting like uh, commissions of from the people who uh, didn't have enough money or they imagine that we can do something for free. Or well, we're often also doing things for the colleagues of ours. And of course, it's been a good like a studying and like a experience how to uh, see how other people are doing things. But it, uh, at the same time, it's not like uh, this kinds of work, it doesn't uh, give you enough like resources or uh, uh, or Publicity to end uh, uh, like uh, to reach the goal that we had. Uh, so uh, we definitely also needed to look at what we do from an outside perspective and to see what sh should be changed. And I uh, figured that in order to make it work, I need um, to first focus on getting um, better in other aspects than just type design. And I uh, thought about the things that I was good at to start with. I uh, like I, uh, for example, I never imagined um, that I'm good in writing, but uh, suddenly I had a few uh, things which I was excited about and then I wrote about it and it seemed like I had something to say and it was not only me who was interested in that. Um, um, and I had a few just clients which potentially could be uh, published and become good type cases. I had an expertise in to relate to Latin, but at the 
same time, I kind of always felt like uh, if I will be talking about myself as only um, as a person who is uh, specializing in stability, it will also limit my possibilities and I will just keep doing stability for other people. Um, I enjoyed organizing events and it started as just organizing exhibitions and then we had organized, we helped other people to organize a conference. We uh, started organizing our own like workshops and I really enjoyed connecting people and not just uh, uh, sharing like my knowledge, but also uh, this um, the pleasure of uh, just getting people to know each other. And um, I also thought that I'm also kind of good in building connections with other people, which uh, which was also a good thing. But in terms of the things which I felt I'm um, not as good as uh, was um, ex oh, because of the fact that I wasn't good in like reaching out to agencies and the designers and meeting them. I uh, could uh, speak English, but I always felt like it's not good enough. And it, if I want to meet other people and have a wider audience, I can <laughs> that and I also need uh, to do it well. And as you can see in terms of public speaking, um, I never imagined myself giving talks anywhere, especially in the beginning, but I always felt like it's, um, it's, um, that it, um, it makes me a lot of, um, it's just cuts off a lot of the opportunities which I might have, uh, which all of these things come will also help uh, to potentially have a lot more opportunities in what I'm doing. And I'm not mentioning any practical Heels, just because I think that any of us might have a weakness, like a certain skill uh, that we don't like, uh, don't like doing, or uh, do not have enough patience to be doing. Like, for example coding, like I um, can maybe do that, but it's uh, just, I was 
never really able to do it as uh, persistently. So I, and like, it's, and it is okay. And we, oh, we can accept and we sh should accept that we can do everything at the same time and also like do it well. Uh, but um, what all of this ended up of for me is that I uh, felt like we definitely need a bigger visibility, but we also need resources. That if we have a visibility, we'll also have resources and that will help us to have much more time to the personal things that we want to do. Uh, so for launch of this phone three, I set up a goal that my job is not to, uh, to, uh, to finish the fonts themselves, but uh, work on having a wider audience. And this is a, something which is, of course, it's easy to say, but it's also hard to do just because as like many colleagues, I think we, uh, we like and diving into designing a type Okay, so we can spend like days and weeks and years getting it better and better and better. Um, and I also like doing that, but um, I have to keep reminding myself that um, my job is, it's kind of like two sides and Type design is one side, and uh, working on the visibility is the second part, and they are in a way equally important to uh, run a foundry. And then there are a few things which really helped us along the way is oh, one of the things is uh, sh uh, sh sharing the font files with designers in the very early stages. Um, and of course, it's always Carry you uh, like especially if you do that for the first time, and you imagine that the person will have issues that there is a missing kerning or something like that. But actually, like uh, like most people, they want see that. But at the same time, you will uh, definitely have a larger chance of just uh, 
that the person will also get a license while you are still finishing a type. Great, it might e um, and it might even happen so that you will um, have a custom permission out of it. Uh, like, uh, and, and like another thing is collaborating. Um, and even uh, things like commissioning the website is a something which um, can also help you. You uh, can of course like do everything just by yourself. It will take your time. Of course, you will uh, save money by doing it all just, just like by yourself. At this same time, you can invest into us in a nice agency uh, to just sign a website for you. And this way, uh, you, you will also to meet and like a different, a bunch of people out of uh, this circle of people that you know. And you also have a chance to educate these people, also sh share uh, like uh, all the font files with them. It is good, uh, like for us, it ended up as a very good, uh, like, advert advertisement as well, since you have like a different kind of an audience and they will uh, sh share um, this work with other people that they know. So I think that's very, like, it's not only a website, it can be anything. And um, I think that teaching is also, uh, powerful, especially if you're teaching not necessarily at a, at a time design course, but at like a graphic design department. And this way you can not only influence the younger generation of people and do good by doing that, but you also, again, have a larger um, group of people that you get to meet and they will also have a look at what are you doing and maybe ask you for help. Um, we've been also organizing um, a series of workshops ourselves. It's been seven years now, and it's, it seems like we've been just 
occasionally like doing that, but it's um, it of course it is a lot of effort, but it's also like it's uh, started with us just like not being happy how education is organized and um, it was always like we were invited for example to give a workshop in uh, for two weeks in um, in a university in Moscow and then you have 30 people starting at us uh, starting at the same time and it's always felt like it's too many people and too little times so we just started like why not organizing it just by ours and oh cool uh, we can have a limited group of people who will be flexible to do anything that we want and uh, like get ended up for like uh, like uh, fasting for like a lot of years now. And this was another way uh, to build more connections with, uh, with uh, the people that uh, we've never met before. And, and they after all also come and ask for help and um, this is another thing which I myself period before is that I was always afraid of asking like to, uh, to get in touch with another person like a famous type designer and like ask for help. Um, it's always feels uh, scary and they're all like serious people and you have your, I don't know, like uh, questions and like, Um, and I always felt like I want to be a person who is not scary uh, to reach out to and that is Sometimes it's harder, sometimes it's easier, but we try to be as nice as we can. Um, so after all this talking, I think that the main thing which, which I wanna say is that it's very important uh, to not only dig into type, but do other things. And it can be anything, and it uh, depends on you like really um, and I think that the whole um, field of type design is changing nowadays um, 
And if we will like uh, also look back in the days, it seems like all the big names, all the people who were uh, well known, um, they have been employed by like large companies like Adobe or phone shop or like or like Linotype and things like this. Uh, of course, Type was also much harder to make at that time. So so it was like also logical. Then the technology had been changing and with like with like a digital era, we started having uh, just a couple of people who started a foundry just by themselves independently, which uh, for a long time, it was just a few studios like this. We had a lot of independent people or uh, people who were like one person kind of a foundry, which still exists and the market is becoming like bigger and bigger. We have a lot more names and a lot of people in the field. But I think that nowadays, especially for us designers who they know, it's mostly like a kind of like a studio, which is uh, kind of like more as an agency. And it's, uh, it's more often, it's not a single person, it is a team and they not only do type and they do different things. And I think that's, and each of them kind of have their own, uh, well, like a brand. Um, they have a vision, they have a style and people also can see this kind of like nuances between them. Uh, and um, and again, also like uh, um, saying that that um, that the, um, that the foundry becomes more and more like an agency. I mean that also it's. It's more and more like um, it's more and more a team effort. It's uh, not only people who are actually designing type. It's more uh, people who are passionate about type, but not necessarily doing it themselves. Like, for example, talking about us, we outsource a lot of things. Of course, uh, the biggest is um, designing the website and the back end of it, it's it with a large amount of uh, stuff that we don't do. We also oh, more and more start giving uh, certain parts of work to other people in terms of ex uh, expanding the families 
and uh, just uh, uh, figuring out like who, what exactly can we do in house and what exactly do we want to give away? Um, we do like a technical things like masking and hinting and coding, which will, will uh, which will also you will um, give away to other people and things like copywriting and editing for all the texts and descriptions and things like this and working on the visuals for the five faces. This all um, uh, and, it, and it is much more. And I think it's, uh, of course you can aim to do everything yourself and then you just have like less and less time to actually do the design. So uh, I think of my work um, uh, largely to be able to have enough resources to give away everything that we can uh, just give to other people. And um, this will, will allow us to have much more time to do what we want to do. And I, um, there are a few things that I keep asking myself. I, and I've been asking it before and I keep asking it uh, nowadays is, um, what exactly do I want to do? Like, so really like who, what I'm passionate about in what I do. And I'm also asking myself if I want to have, uh, want to earn money. Um, by doing that because of course it's also nice to have certain things that you just do for your for your uh, for yourself us for example i started baking last year as many people did i guess like kind of started a little bit before this uh, whole expansion uh, started and people keep asking me like, do you want to have a bakery or, or like something like that? And like, no, because I want to bake. And, and, and like enjoy that and not being like, oh, I have to sell a thousand like loaves each day. Um, um, but really, if you wanna like, um, if you, have a goal that you want to start making money over 
that also think how you can help that and or uh, how exactly are you different from other people also doing this same thing and I think it's also nice to think about it, it uh, in a way that you can also have like a, a side interest, uh, I don't know, in fashion or even like baking or anything like that, which can also maybe help you get better in what you do, or like maybe even influence what you do. Um, and uh, to me, I think it's most important is uh, to meet people to uh, work with other people and if you see that is there is not that many people that you can work with you, you can educate them as well and share the things that you know, and things like that. Um, and to finishing it up, uh, I just uh, kind of summing up everything that I said before. If you want to stay independent, and by staying independent, I don't mean uh, like have a phone so you can be just talking you know, just by yourself. I think it's uh, first thing is uh, the connections that you have. It can be colleagues, classmates, anybody that you know of. Of course, these people will be the first ones to hear about what you do and maybe uh, tell about it to other people that they know. But I think it's also very important to visualize, like, ideally, uh, who are the people you are just planning things for, um, what are they doing and what do they need and how exactly can you meet them? This is like, of course, it might take a lot of time, but if you have it on the back of your hand and you just explore, like look for, for the New interesting designers and doing nice stuff. I think that's what's uh, just. Uh, I think it's like uh, to me in a way it's like an every big job as well to just like look around me and see what's happening over there. And in terms of teaching, I think that we um, had like, uh, even in the times of a pandemic, uh, we uh, started having this uh, very nice online schools in Instagram, like uh, what, oh no, type had been doing and really type. And this is 
this is ex exactly a way to engage with people um, and to not only uh, and not only educate them, but by educating them, you can also uh, in a way sh show your approach to work and things like that, which is um, very nice, I think. And overall, talking about what you do and um, not necessarily showing the final like result, but uh, how exactly are you doing that? And maybe you have certain things that you uh, don't like what's happening in the industry and you, you know, can also uh, speak up about that. And um, very often you think that, oh, it's just me, like uh, um, who is obsessed about it, but actually it's most often it's much more people who will sh share your, uh, your emotions and you can actually influence what's happening in the field. And uh, all that is about like building The bridges between type and graphic design to me. And I hope I didn't sound um, too, like I didn't um, want to sound like the, the actual stuff that you do is uh, is um, not valuable, but um, I just think that it's not the only aspect which may help you, and uh, just even thinking about it will already be a good start um, for looking at what you do kind of from the outside. And uh, at last, following everything I said it's not that I figured out a set of rules for everybody and that's how it sh should be done it's more um, that each of us have a different story to say and um, um, even if we um, have similar goals that we want to achieve, we can use our own skills and also work on our own skills in order to do better. Uh, but that's a, something where everybody is different and uh, you can 
to whatever you want, basically. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maria. Um, I, I, I think like, I hope people can can uh, find the images to, to give you a round of applause. It's uh, super, super fun. And like, it's, it's one of those uh, things I really, really miss from being in person. It's just like the, the human energy. But I think you touched a lot of thoughts and a lot of ideas. And I think, um, I think that there's so many really interesting things um, that you, you said that I think resonate with a lot of people so I really really appreciate your your um, kindness and generosity and in, in, in sharing your thoughts it's it's always really impressive to see uh, people brave to like really talk about things that maybe sometimes don't get talked about and I really appreciate that you took the time uh, to, to share these thoughts with with everybody um, thank you there's a there's a question I kind of um, had you you touched on this in one of the one of the slides at the very end like the things that um you know as an educator um things that that people are doing like james and 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 and, and uh really tight like there's a lot more of this sort of openness um to share resources but along those lines was there anything that you think um surprised you uh, uh, in a way, like over, let's say, this last year, this this like very crazy year that we all had. Was there anything that surprised you about the industry? Anything that surprised you about the design in both, let's say, positive and negative? Well, I can't think of anything specific right away, but I think that what I was. Uh, um, I was kind of, of course, in the beginning, everybody was uh, scared, how is it going to be? But I was also very happy for this style of work that we had. I like, uh, for us, it's basically that I moved here two and a half years ago and at that time it, it was unusual and scary that we were on a distance only like uh, just passing things online and I was afraid how are we going to make it work um, because we now a team of, I think six people. So five people in Moscow or four full time, I guess. And me over here, which is, um, uh, which, which at that time, of course it was unusual and scary. So we had this, two years to get ready for the quarantine in a way. Yeah. And now it's like, it's not unusual. Everybody is like that before it was like, how are you doing? How is it going? Now it's like nothing really to talk about it. it, it like it's not unusual yeah. anymore. And anyway, I, Thing in terms of education, of course, in the beginning, like I was always uh, like I never imagined that education can be as efficient online as it is offline. And I was like invited to to record like an online course and things like this. And I was like, no, 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 this is like, I don't really want to <laughs> be a part of it. Uh, it this, it's not the same. Of course it's not the same, but at the same time, um, like um, when it all happened, 
past year, I like pretty immediately this decided uh, to sh shift our course online, uh, like in March last year, and this way, like of uh, like at that time, people were saying like, "Oh, but maybe it will be okay in this summer time." Uh, can we do that offline? But it was like very good this decision to not like wait for the things to change and to get better, but just adjust to that. And I think that this uh, like this kind of like being able to adjust is very. Uh, uh, of course, it was challenging last. Here especially, but I think it's it is another thing about time to just sign which is important because technology is changing. Uh, like a lot of things are changing. Like every I don't know five years, it's very different. I think so. This kind of like being old. And the, to the things that might change is very important as well. Mm -hmm. There's a few questions in the q and I'm just going to take a couple of questions uh, from there. Um, there's a question from Jamal, Jamal Benjamin, one of our students. Um, uh, his, his question you know, starts with a comment. Uh, this was a refer refreshing to hear. I love your analogy about the baker versus running a bakery the baker loves to bake and wants to just do that could you share your insight about making the decision of being the baker and deciding not to open a bakery what do you see <laughs> as possible i love that <laughs> that's uh, just a uh, talk about baking no <laughs> um so i think that the reason i started in Showing it is just because it's um, it's uh, something that you just do with your hands. That's that is one thing which I enjoy, and I was always enjoying also uh, sculpture, you know, art uh, uh, school, and I'm even. Sometimes I would really want to get back into that, maybe. Um, but baking is something I think oh, on the opposite of time design that you do. It's also like there's a lot of technology involved. Like you should, uh, you should be like careful about ingredients mixing and things like this but at the same time it's the longest two days and you have it done <laughs> it's not like a tight fit which might take ages and it's very satisfying i think <laughs> it's like this It's interesting yeah, too. Question. Yeah, I, I mean, I, there's, there's, uh, it kind of makes me think of like the, I mean, there's, there's obviously like the link to the hand in both practices, you know, like such a like writing and how writing influences the understanding of type forms, but also like the very media kind of feedback from baking. And you said like kind of uh, sculpture and pottery, like there's a, but it's, a, it's, it's, it's interesting, like the, like the, the difference in the way that you kind of think through your hands in both practices. Like it, it's, uh, you know, I just see like the, the interesting link to the hand. And <laughs> I think I like doing things by hand and that's a lot of also, yeah, it just helps maybe the head as well when you just start doing something with your hand. It's like, I don't know, it's a, it's a bit like meditation as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
<laughs> there's a there's another question from uh, William Schuster. Um, what would your advice be to a type designer who wants to pursue a master's program in type design but is unsure about which programs would be best for them? Uh, maybe from your experience, like your own teaching that you've done, your experience with other programs, like would you have any advice for? Well, I guess, uh, well, uh, now it's more and more. Places where you can go, of course. Uh, when I was uh, getting my master's, uh, there were basically two main schools at that time. Um, now it's more, I think. But um, I would say that uh, just like, uh, just maybe look at what the teachers are doing there. Um, like, and, and what are the people doing after studying there? So you have, uh, of course, like still the main two, I guess, are type and media and reading. There's also another one in Akali, which is two years, but they're all very different, I think. And uh, in, in like, in like, uh, Reading, it's more about like it's not as much about these finite stuff. It's about the research behind it, and uh, they have to submit a huge paper. So it's more academical at this um, in this sense. Um, at type in the media, it's more. Uh, uh, about, I think that it's more about exploring the design space in a way, trying different tools. Um, and it's, okay, it's very different, I think. Uh, but at the same time, I think it's much, uh, um, I think it's it has a much more connection to graphic design. And uh, as far as I know, this course that they have now, it was initially called Arc Direction. And now it started being called type designs. So it's uh, I think it's much more oriented to the, to the usage of type. Yeah, I think that's well. At least that's uh, how I see this. Mm -hmm. differences between. I also wonder if um, this is obviously like becomes a very um, tricky, very, very personal uh, question. I think like it's the same kind of question that I think graphic designers often ask, which I think is maybe like, you know, it's, it's in, in the context of like a master's degree, you know, I think in the graphic design field, the master's degree isn't essential. It's, 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 um, you know, I think it's a different sort of platform within typeface design is quite different because a master's degree in typeface design is like one of the few places where you can really learn the craft of making uh, because it isn't part of something that you learn so it, it's a different kind of trajectory but um would you you know maybe like adding a question to will's question like do you see um i guess again it's a personal choice of course but would would you say it's it's um um, how important is it to 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 get a master's degree? Do you think the field is changing to the point where there are more avenues where a master's degree in typeface design isn't the only criteria? Well, I, I it's hard to say, but 
Um, I think it's definitely not a must. And we can, and uh, that, and the fact that you will get a, um, a degree in doesn't mean that you will end up um, getting a better like job or something like that. Like it's, uh, it can be like this, but it can also not be like this. So I think that the question, is more like to ask yourself like like who so exactly do you want to go and study there what's your like end goal like um for me in a way um I uh, I wanted to explore like much more things that I didn't do before, and I felt like it's like limiting my stuff and what I do, and I couldn't figure out like like oh. What am I doing wrong that it's not working in a way? And I, of, uh, but at the same time, I can imagine that it would have been all possible if I was just be a more like focused. Person who would just do that on their own, maybe. Um, I've definitely needed to push also out of my comfort zone in a way that I've never lived anywhere outside Russia before that. I've never leave alone before that so uh so it, it was a lot of challenges in in also like uh, in terms of life even and i think that it also kind of yeah it gave me a lot of confidence in what I'm doing also. So, but that can be different to other people. And yeah, different people have different experience. So, and we can see a lot of people nowadays who didn't study time, maybe just Fine, and they're doing amazing stuff. So, I think it's definitely not a must for everybody. It's a very, very interesting feel, which I think, like you, you touched on a lot of um, a lot of thoughts in terms of what um, motivates people and like what what kind of um, spaces people can look into, but uh, I it definitely it's uh, it's nice to see that there's more programs uh, starting. I think and especially kind of in in places that maybe uh, didn't have as much access to this kind of education. Um, I, you know, I think one of the byproducts of a lot of the programs is also the graduates. That then you you talked about this like the you know the giving back in a way the teaching that that uh that happens organically you know um a lot of these programs are very international you know and the students then go back kind of to to their respective areas and they start teaching you start to see programs like in in other parts of the world where there's there's a new um interest in type design so it's really fascinating to see that that exchange and, and the languages and the scripts 
Um, so, it, and then how it then comes back together, the networks stay intact, the students, the classmates that, that people have had, the collaborations that, that sort of opened up. It's super, super interesting to see that. Um, so it's, uh, um, it, it's, I think it's a really fascinating time um, to, to sort of be in this, in this space and, and um, you know, to be curious uh, and kind of take, take the risks uh, and, and sort of explore things as, as, as people kind of feel your way out. Um, it, it's, it's also, you know, I think talks like this open up ideas for people, which I think is the best thing we can do is just to create these kinds of dialogues uh, for, for people. I to hope. <laughs> I, I, I believe so. <laughs> um, oh, it's just like, yeah, I'm just, I think that my, image of colleagues was like especially some time ago when studying and also asking them like certain things like it always uh, seems like when well especially if you are talking to a person who achieves something they tell you that yeah I'm going to have a dinner usually like I leave a studio at five o'clock and then I go and have a dinner with the family and then maybe if I have a mood in the evening I will like reply a few emails that's my day it's like if you look at like it sounds like these people are like living in a dream life <laughs> <laughs> and you kind of like wonder you feel like oh I'm like really bad in that organizing my stuff I need to work on my stuff and then at the same time you see that the sick people they are like doing so much and they're like they, uh, they have like 100 hands maybe so that they can do everything that they're doing but that's again like Many people are not talking about like how like much stuff they automate and what they do, how much stuff they outsource and how so much they're paying to people to do that. This is also different from foundry to foundry and depending on location. And if uh, you have to, sign up a paper that you can never sh show it anywhere that you've done that it's just, just like them putting everything obviously um, so there's a lot of this stuff that's kind of uh, covered with a pink mirror or <laughs> like just uh, yeah Definitely. Well, I think this is this is maybe like a good note to, to close out. And I think like what 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 really stuck out. I mean, amongst many things that that resonated with me, but this idea that um, um, to be kind, to be to be nice to other people, and not to also be afraid to talk to people and ask questions. I think sometimes, yeah, you know, I share the sentiment that you had um, when you're a, you're a student. You're very worried, concerned, afraid maybe to ask uh, the teachers questions and maybe sometimes hard questions or challenging or, or, or to feel like you could. And I, I encourage everyone to feel empowered to, 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 to have the questions and try to, you know, but, uh, but and, and then the flip side to, for others to be kind and, and gentle and, and understanding. Uh, I think both of those things, you know, like amongst many other things will go a long way to help this world heal a little bit and, and, and create more bonds. So I, I, I appreciate your kindness, Maria, and, and your generosity for, for, for being with us um, and, and spending time and, and sharing this amazing wisdom with people. I think like people really took a lot away. You could, you could see, uh, hopefully you saw in the chat, but thank you again. It's, it's, it's wonderful to, thank to you have you here. So Our much students are super for lucky. organizing that. Of course, of course. It's been it's, a while, yes. <laughs> since we initially had been talking about it, but I'm really happy that we also made it 
happen at the end and uh you all like organizing everything so carefully all the technical stuff that we discussed before it's like i'm usually really? also like um big um organizing things myself i can also like i'm like oh my god this is amazing <laughs> <laughs> so it's, careful it's, and thank you yeah it's it's so it's I, I feel very lucky to have very good people to work with so it's it's what makes it makes this all happen so yay to like good kind people so and uh thank you Thank you thank you everybody for for coming and, and and attending and listening and watching uh the link will be available the youtube link will stay up you can watch this again and we'll have a a, a, a sort of an edited version Don't of this watch so. it again. <laughs> <laughs> that's great it's great thank you so much uh be safe everyone be safe for you be healthy uh have a great thank night and, and we'll see you all soon thanks so much everyone have a great night. day too bye bye